uh, I get a, I get a dispatch call to the area. Um, it was an unverified 911, meaning a 911 hang up. They somebody's called 911 but didn't speak to the dispatcher. Um, so I so they put me to the area, and so I, so I'm I'm searching the neighborhood looking for a problem, somebody that might be under distress. I did talk to some neighbors. They said everything is quiet in their neighborhood. Um, but I kept patrolling, uh, and I saw that there's some lights were on at a house. And then uh, for, for that area, it was unusual at 2.30 in the morning. So I went and made contact, knocked on the door, and, uh, and then I found that there was a situation at that house. What was the situation? When you walked up the door, what was it like? Well, I, I walked up the door, and I went to knock, and, and I see this elderly female in the house. She comes running toward the house. She almost fell into the door uh, that was standing between her and I. Uh, it was a screen a screen door and uh, she said her, her son was uh, she couldn't wake up her son um, so I, I called for fire rescue and I, I go in there to see if I can make contact with the son and find out what's going on so when you got inside what was happening uh, well uh, I get inside I go into the bedroom and the son the patient had uh, was was on the floor he was in an awkward position um, he looked to be deceased I mean he was ashen color and uh, so I, I repositioned him and, and started feeling for a pulse and for breathing, uh, looking for, for chest rise, and, and he didn't have any of it. Uh, so I went to work. I, went, I started CPR. I called out to dispatch to tell him what I was doing, and I, I started my CPR. And uh, thankfully, everything worked out. So I'd say, yeah. like, okay, so what happened after you started doing CPR? How long did it take before you started seeing any life in this person? Well, I, it, it was um, it was several minutes. As a matter of fact, the, my zone partner, Mark K, a uh, wonderful young deputy, uh, he shows up and and starts assisting me. And it wasn't until after he gets there that uh, that we we notice some difference there. Uh, we we have a we have a faint pulse. Uh, he took a big gasp of air, so I knew that the CPR was working, and the CPR does work, of course. But uh, I knew it was working, and and. Um, we just continued on with that. We lost the pulse again, so we started some more chest compressions uh, while Mark, uh, Deputy Mark K was, was uh, uh, keeping the airway open and, and uh, everything worked, worked well. And the, the fire rescue uh, showed up. Uh, my supervisor was on the way and, and um, once they got him into the ambulance, uh, he had a pulse, but he, but he still was not breathing on his own. Uh, so, so they took it from there and, and I was relieved. I was, I was relieved, but I was also very proud of this team of, at the Hernando County Sheriff's Office, from the dispatchers, the supervisors, even the, the training department that took over and, and prepared this Deputy Mark Cage to be out there with me. Uh, he was jammed up. He was ready to go. When you, I mean, you're giving CPR to this person who looks like a, a dead person, yeah. and you hear a breath. I mean, what is, what's going through your mind? What's your reaction to that? Uh, well, it, it, it's, it's just about a job that needs to be done and and the breath that big breath told me that that we're getting somewhere here we're doing it we're, we're getting somewhere and and uh, just we just have to keep you have a tiger by the tail here and you just got to keep holding on and keep doing it and um, and then when the fire rescue gets there then then I'm relieved of it and I can go out in the front yard and and uh, be relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what did you do after fire rescue gets there? Like you're done with all of this. You basically kind of found a needle in a haystack situation and were able to, to save a man's life. Yes. What, what's your reaction to this? Um, well, I, I've had so many different reactions that morning that the, the immediate relief was, and I still had my team coming to me and I still had my team uh, on the radio, checking me out and, and making sure I had the resources coming to me. Um, the, the, just the huge sigh of relief that 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 I did what so many people has invested in me to do, and I did do that. And Mark K, that young deputy, he did do that, and and I was real proud of him. And so now, so now my attention turned to uh, we we have to get this report taken care of. We have to get this investigation. What happened? Because. At the time, all I knew was that he didn't have a pulse and he didn't have a breath. But now, I, now we have to change hats and find out why, what's what's going on. Was um, and, and so, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to be relieved. It was time to go to to my next uh, mode of, of job here today. What about when you first got there and you and you you saw the the gentleman for the first time? What was going through your head at that moment? Well. Um, 
you know, through the series of assessment and, and assessing the patient, um, when I first looked at him, I, I just I figured that he had passed in the night, you know, because of his, the color. But but then there are some protocols and there's some things that we do that to assess him. And once I get to to assess him, that then I, I figured out that CPR is 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 an option here. And so let's jump onto that. And then thinking uh, goes out the window after that. You just now you're just um, you're just performing. That's what I was uh, thinking. Um, do you guys normally show up to a situation where you see someone who is possibly deceased and and give them CPR, especially if this guy looked like he'd been dead maybe for a few hours? Well, that was part of the assessment. He didn't look like he was dead for a few hours, but he did look like he was dead. And of course, uh, a lack of pulse and respiration would would indicate that. But um, through the assessment, uh, CPR was an option. So so there we go. We have to move forward with that. And I'm real thankful for the dispatchers who put me in the area uh, and, and gave me the opportunity to, to, to do this kind of service for the for the people there. Um, the supervisors, and, and like I said, that young uh, Mark K was just as much a part of this as I was. This seems really miraculous to me. I mean, that you were able to find this home and just be there at the right moment because it seems like, you know, this guy, could have died if not wasn't already dead yeah. have you ever been involved with anything like this before well i've been a police officer since 1988 i've also uh worked with the fire department and was a, a part-time firefighter in dade city so i've been through this before uh several times uh this is the first time just so happened to be the first time i've been through it with Fernando county sheriff's office but I'm, I'm real thankful for the team and that to include the telecommunicators who put me in the right spot, the supervisors who's running. He's he's got an AED in his car and he's running to me, um, and I could I could really feel their concern and their their um, they're rooting me on uh, through the radio and and uh, like I said, even some of them probably was praying for me. Who knows? But but I'm real thankful for my, for the team that I've I've been involved with here.